Hey, here I am at work. I live in a cubicle environment. That's where I work, actually. And everybody else is at lunch, and I'm at lunch. So I figured I would just uh, do this video blog now so nobody can hear every single word I say. Today on the Heaven's Metal Podcast, we're going to talk about the Henry Rollins story. <laughs> Hope you can hear me. The AC is super loud and super cool. It's one reason why I'm wearing a sport coat. I look awful spiffy, don't I? Okay, this story is about one of the interviews I've done. This one is actually published in Rock Stars on God, Volume 1. This is Volume 2. Volume 1 is completely sold out. I'm hoping to reprint Volume 1 and release it on HM Press, like Volume 2. This one has 25 of the best interviews. Volume 1 had 20 of the most famous people, and Henry Rollins is one of those famous people. You know, he's with the band Black Flag, of course. And back when I did this interview, it was 2001, we had our offices in Austin, and my managing editor at the time was so nervous, he heard that Henry Rollins was a really tough interview. He was pacing the floor before the interview took place, which was funny, hilarious uh, at the moment, and looking back at it. And we had a mutual friend named Chris Esty. This guy used to work for Tooth and Nail Records that was a super knowledgeable rock critic, uh, rock journalism guy. He knew a lot about Henry Rollins, was probably a big fan of Henry Rollins. So I thought, you know, hey, maybe he can give me some questions that um, nobody else would, would have, maybe some information he knows that maybe would, would come up with some good questions. So the week before the interview, I told him, hey, I'm interviewing Henry Rollins tomorrow or whatever. Uh, if you got any questions I should ask him, fire away, you know. So he sent me a list of like, you know, at least half a dozen questions, some good ones. And what I did is I just kind of spliced them into my interview questions. And so I asked Henry Rollins about this and that. And, of course, I asked him, what do you think of Jesus Christ? And he's like, we're not going there, pal. And what do I think about, what does he think about the way, his claims to be the way, the truth, and the life? No one comes to the Father but by me. And he's like, not going to go there, pal, you know. And, I asked him a question about somebody that he knew, a good friend of his that died recently. I'm not going to go there, pal. And uh, and then I asked a question that that my friend gave me, and I just asked it word for word as my friend wrote it. And I looked back, and dang it, if I shouldn't have rewritten that question, because it was kind of it's kind of slanted. It said, you know, how did you get roped into that hosting on this TV show, blah blah blah. I can't remember the name of the show right now. And he goes, why did you word the question that way? Are you trying to be a flippant prick or what? You know, and I guess, well, I guess I'm just being a flippant prick. And he goes, well, if we were face-to-face doing this interview, we'd see how flippant you'd be then. You know, and I could just see the veins in his neck bulging. I could just, if he could, if he reached his hands out and just throttled me over the phone, he would have done it. And fortunately, by the grace of God and so fast thinking, I was able to keep the conversation going and actually, you know, come back around to some spiritual angled questions and the interview turned out good, but boy, it got tense there for a moment, and that was one of the highlights, and kind of a bad memory for me, laugh about now. Um, One thing that always kind of surprised me is Henry is a cool guy. Uh, He's definitely done some good stuff in the music industry. I've seen him on TV with a microphone in his hand interviewing other musicians, so he's been in my shoes as a journalist, so why does he have such a chip on his shoulder when it comes to journalists? Because, I don't know, I guess some people just do. You've been burned a few times. You tend to be jaded about all people in this category. And I was a rock music journalist, so I had to be, you know, labeled with all those people. Even though I think I'm one of the one of the good ones. I'm sure everybody thinks that. But uh, anyway, I had some intelligent questions to ask him, and the interview came off well. But I always wondered, you know, man, I wish he wasn't such a hard dude to interview. Why can't he relax? And maybe the second interview. Uh, it would be better because, you know, when you learn to trust somebody, you find out they're not a freak and they're not going to twist your words and rewrite everything you say. But uh, but that was one of the tougher interviews and it was definitely a very, very tense moment. And I laugh about it now. And uh, it uh, it turned out to be a good piece. It's a good read. You can find Rockstars on God through Amazon.com. It is out of print. But hopefully I'll get that thing reprinted and released on HM Press. But for now... I am pitching unashamedly this book. It's thick, and it's got 25 interviews with all sorts of awesome people. Ronnie James Dio, Bruce Dickinson, Chris Cornell, 
Uh, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Mike Peters, Scott Stapp, the dude from Midnight Oil. Anyway, so that's it. Join the discussion.